Yo, what's going on everyone? It's Brian and Jim, and welcome to our first video for our Zombie-a-thon month. We're starting it off with one of our childhood favorites, Zombies Ate My Neighbors for the Sega Genesis and Super NES. Released in 1993, this was developed by LucasArts. This game is a overhead running gun game. It's zombie themed, but besides that, you have all kinds of different uh, horror themes going on in here. It's basically a little bit of everything, and if you're a horror fan, it's your video game wet dream. I'm a horror fan! And he just came. Alright, so diving right into the graphics, uh, we love them. They might not be perfect, but there's a shit ton of colors, there's a lot of different details, there's a fair number of enemies, and they all have their different little animations and everything. There's nothing to hate about this. I think approximately 55 levels, something to that nature, and each one is... I don't want to say 100% different, but it's different enough that they had to spend a lot of time. So, look at this breakdown. I gave it an 8, and Jim gave it a 7. Alright, the sound. Once again, there is a lot going on. You have a ton of different music tracks, you have a ton of different sound effects, all the different enemies have different sounds. It's very thematic, it can be very spooky at times, very over the top though too. I mean, really? It's just everything you come to expect from Konami. I kind of geek out over this because this is one of the soundtracks to my childhood. When I hear it, I just get taken back to when I was 10 years old and I'd spend an entire summer to try and beat it and fail miserably. The Genesis is a little bit more, I'd say, simplistic in its sound, whereas the Super NES is a little bit more dynamic. But you also get a little bit more reverb that can get a little annoying after a while with the Super NES. So it comes down to personal taste there. Either way, it's a great sounding game with a lot of character, and we gave it pretty high scores all around. Bri gave it an 8, and I gave it a 7. Alright, so as far as control goes, well, have you ever played an overhead shooter? Then you know exactly what to expect out of this game. You point, and you shoot. That's it. There's no jumping buttons, it's just a shoot button and your directional pad. And they even make the item collection just walking over it, the way we enjoy it. Simple as shit, no complaints. One thing I will say, however, and this is more or less a technicality. So if you only had the original Genesis 3-button controller, you needed to hit A and B together to swap to change around your weapons, and I never actually figured out how to go through your different items, so you would just have to use an item until it was gone to go on to your next one. It's just another gimmick to get yourself a six button controller and the Super NES didn't have that problem because it had all those buttons. But either way, putting that aside, this game is great and the only reason it didn't get perfect, if you're trying to shoot at something at a diagonal or even straight in front of you, it's pretty pixel perfect and the diagonal shots can be a little annoying at times. So, overall, when you consider all these little issues, it's not perfect, but we both still gave it sevens. Alright, the gameplay. Now, when it comes down to it, you're basically just trying to save your neighbors from getting eaten, killed, slashed, maimed, squashed, whatever. That's the basic goal. But, for the most part, the game throws a lot of different ways for you to get there. A lot, Most of the levels are pretty big, and they're almost maze-like in a lot of ways. But, there's a lot of ways to traverse it, multiple playthroughs will definitely help you as far as knowing what the hell you have to do. There's a ton of secrets in every level, a ton of different branching paths, there's secret boss fights you can find, there's mandatory boss fights which change things up a bit. There's just so much going on. And not only that, you have so many different weapons, so many different items. It's really hard to find any real kind of fault. Maybe the amount of levels gets to be a little much after a while but you're still gonna have fun the entire time through. Some levels only have maybe one or two hot, uh, neighbors, and if they both get killed without you saving any of them, that's game over. That's not even losing a life, that's straight up, you're fucked, game over, try again. The password system helps, but it's not every level, it's every couple levels, so some you're gonna wind up playing again and again. Once again, it's definitely a lot of strategy. We like it a lot, but it can be unfair at times. Either way, we both love it. We gave it eights. As far as originality is concerned, surprisingly, this game offered a lot. Before this game, there weren't really that many horror-themed games that combined it. so many different horror elements in a way that we've seen like this. And most typically, for top-down shooters like this, 
It would just require you to go through a level and it would be pretty linear, shooting your way till the end, killing off all the enemies. Like Jim mentioned, this kind of added a slight puzzle element and almost things like Legend of Zelda, like breaking down walls to find things and it just combined the things in a way we really hadn't seen before and we couldn't help but give it high scores. So as you see, we both gave it eights. All right, replayability. First thing we're gonna get to, if you don't know exactly what you're doing or if you haven't played this game in a long time, this game's gonna kick your ass. Now I know a ton of reviewers out there like to talk about how easy this game is, but I'm gonna call bullshit on that. It's not like it's the hardest game in the world, don't get me wrong. If you know what you're doing, you can plow through this game without that many issues. I'll give it that. But, unless you know exactly what you're doing, you're gonna have a lot of time running through, a lot of trial and error, a lot of memorization. But like I said before, there's a ton of secrets, the difficulty will keep you coming back again and again, and there's so many levels that, hell, you might just like a certain batch, and thanks to the password system, you can just go straight to them. So, overall, while it isn't the most replayable game from the strictest sense of the word, it still has a lot that'll keep you coming back, and it's just fun. So, we gave it sevens. So overall, let me sum it up. We love this game. No, it's not the best game in the world, but it's just plain fun. If you're a real horror enthusiast, you might be sad that it's a little more quirky and it's not really scary, but who cares? It's just fun to throw forks, silver forks at werewolves, to shoot zombies with water guns, and to throw down inflatable cl clowns so a uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre ripoff can hit them with his chainsaw. There's nothing wrong with this game overall, and if you just want a good time with your buddy while you're drinking some beers, you really can't go wrong with this, especially with Halloween coming up. So, as you see, we both gave it eights. What else is there to say? Enjoy this game, guys, because we sure as hell do. All right, everyone, and as far as our beer pairings are going to go, let's go with the Yingling Oktoberfest. We figure, hey, it's still around the Halloween season. Get yourself a pumpkin or Oktoberfest-style beer, and we actually use this for our drunken long play, which you can see this Friday. We know this beer goes very well with this game. The frantic pace, the quick sips, you're not going to be too drunk while you're playing, but you can still have a lot of fun. And as always, guys, remember to drink your beers and play your games responsibly. See you next time.